All right, good, 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 good. All right, everybody, uh, just waiting for Bruce to get all settled in, and we'll get started, okay? I'm all set to go, uh, Fausto. All right, no problem. Um, Rich, are we all recorded, ready to go, and share on um, and all our channels? Sure. Because we're going to be broadcasting all this stuff on all our social networks and stuff. All right, good. All right, so let's get started. Um, so, listen, hope everyone had a good day today in the market. We had a couple of really great rallies, and... Um, it's just a lot of good movement of certain stocks that we traded. I mean, you saw what happened to some of the stocks like Via, uh, VAS going from like 50 cents to $4. I thought the big one was awesome was the SM, um, MSGM. That literally went from like 20 to 80 in pre-market. Um, EBET, another stock up a little over 100%, you know, a dollar to like three bucks. So there was definitely a lot going on and was really excited about all those stocks that were moving. But, um, but as you all know, we do phase three today for some of your students here at Cybertrain University, and they all moved really, really nice. But the big thing that we've really been focusing our attention on is we're doing a lot when it comes to you know, using the book map. And I know a lot of you here have been focusing on that book map. And with that, uh, as we trade with that book map, there's a lot of good features on it, on following iceberg orders and all that stuff. I mean, you know, we use NASDAQ Trader, uh, uh, NASDAQ Book Viewer and all that, but there's a little bit more advanced with a heat map. So we're, as you know, we're doing a lot more for you guys to learn a lot more in the cyber group room. We're going to bring guests in. Uh, we're going to do them. Obviously, not the most volatile times of the market within the first hour and the last hour. But just like Traders Talk, we're going to bring guests instead of doing closing bells, you know, after hours, we're going to do them here in the middle of the day or we'll do them in the afternoon. But we don't want you guys to log in, log out. So, um, but uh, Bruce going to, uh, I know uh, I've been using Bookmap, geez, it's got to be at least since, you know, well, not too much longer since they started. Great platform. We've been using it ever since. Probably one of the very few only platforms I use uh, other than for some new service. But Bruce going to talk about some of the good features that he worked on, that have been working on the, on the, on the platform. Uh, I'm just going to talk for about maybe 40 minutes or so on. And then, for everyone here, we have a link for you. If you want to get that promotion to kind of get it, you could. Um, I know a lot of you here have Thinkorswim. You can use Thinkorswim and, and, and tie it. It's not the same like the standalone. But, um, but we'll go, you know, like I said, ask any questions you might have in the room. And, um, and like I said, he'll, Bruce will be able to kind of answer them as, in great detail as possible. But I'll show you some other new features on it. All right. So let's, uh, let's get going. And uh, Bruce, you can take over. Uh, Bruce, your mic is off. Okay, so uh, hello, thank you, Fausto, and uh, uh, everyone can see my screen. I I cannot see it, but uh, I guess that doesn't matter. Uh, but uh, uh, looks like we're all good to go. You can see Amazon right now. Yeah. Bruce, could you see the chats going on? Uh, I do yep. not. Hold on. You should have it somewhere a second because when you share. You basically have your. Okay. Should be able to see both. Okay. Is it the top or the bottom? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I see it now. All right. Great. All right. So uh, we're all good to go. Okay. I, I have a little bit of an echo in there, uh, but uh, uh, and and uh, I, I need to also get some feedback from you guys. What stocks do you want to take a look at? Uh, so Fausto, maybe you can rattle off some right off the bat uh, that you guys are looking at today. Well, we're looking at EBET, E-B-E-T was a nice one that moved this morning. Okay. Peloton was moving pretty nice, P-T-O-N. Okay. Uh, and, uh, what else that was moving pretty nice uh, that had a good run up? T-Q-Q-Q. Well, we had the, M uh, well, that this stock was pretty crazy. It was too volatile. BGA, BGX. Uh, BS was pretty, pretty, uh, was moving up pretty nicely. All right. Okay. All right. So AMD, AI, those all, AI was actually pretty good in AMD. Okay. And AMD. All right. Good enough. Uh, good enough to get started. Um, all right. So, 
So uh, I'm, I'm imagining uh, everyone's pretty familiar with Bookmap. Um, I'm going to just go through a quick overview for those of you who uh, are maybe are newer to it. Uh, we do this just about every time. Uh, so for you, for you guys uh, more experienced with Bookmap, uh, just uh, just bear with us for for a few minutes. Uh, what Bookmap is showing and how to uh, understand it and, and read it. Uh, so let's let's jump over to a stock that you guys are actually looking at. Uh, we'll look at this uh, eBet, and I'm going to add more data. Now, one one of the ways to add more data, uh, like I just opened it up, and I have only, as you can see, like an hour of data in here. All right, so zoom all the way out, and then click on this button over here, uh, and uh, this little gray button with an arrow in here, and it pops up the load historical data here. Uh, I had a choice to load more when I first opened the symbol, as you probably saw. I chose an hour so I could demo this for you. Uh, and then uh, let's see, uh, the market's been open uh, uh, for, yeah, we can put in three hours and that'll be fine. Um, and that'll give us uh, today's uh, regular trading hour session here. All right, now uh, you can see it's uh, up here, it's, it's downloaded that information with the red text. Now all I have to do is use my center mouse wheel and zoom out and there we go. All right, so um, now for those of you looking at Bookmap, uh, for the first time or unfamiliar with Bookmap, uh, what this is showing here is very, very simple, straightforward data. It really does look complex. We always get this. Uh, and like, why do I need more complexity in my life? Trading is difficult enough. Uh, it's actually quite the opposite. It's funny. This is actually very straightforward, blunt data. Uh, it is just visualized in a unique way, and it's showing much more transparency than you would get from other charting uh, platforms or visualization. So uh, let's just uh, go over and compare it to a candlestick chart. And I'll go through this quickly, uh, but just let me know if you have any questions. We're going to put a candlestick chart on here. We're going to take these very simple three elements off of the book map chart for now and just looking at a candlestick chart. All right, so uh, this is a five minute candlestick, 15 minute. Let's go to a five. All right, there's a five minute candlestick chart. That's it. Open high, low and close every five minutes. That's the problem right there. Every five minutes, you're only getting open high, low and close. What happened in between these two periods, you do not know. You just know that it closed up here. This candle opened up here kind of closed above the previous candle, and then you got a breakout candle here. Uh, and uh, uh, what happened in here, though, is the magic. Where where do we get insight uh, in here? We want to understand the context, not just a bar of aggregated data. We want to see the pure price action. So let's look at that first, and that'll be the first. We'll zoom into this little area, and we'll, we'll just show the first element on the book map chart, which is streaming best bid and offer. It is not a time frame here. It's just pure price action. And this is what unfolded. Uh, and uh, it's interesting stuff because you can see, we can uh, uh, look at the uh, uh, cash open here and you can draw on the chart here. Uh, and uh, uh, you can see that uh, we have a consolidation period, a small breakout, another small breakout followed by a bigger breakout. All right. That's the action here. Uh, and, uh, uh, we what we want to understand here, and we're going to compare it to our candlestick chart right here, uh, is the next uh, element on the book map chart, uh, and that is looking at volume. All right, and here we go. Now we're getting something. Uh, we we understand the pure price action and these little pullbacks, another breakout. But look at the volume here. The green dots are market buy orders. Uh, this is actually uh, what moves the market, uh, the, the, the aggressor volume. They cross the spread. They take liquidity. If they take enough liquidity off of the best offer, they will move price up the next level. Uh, and uh, it's the same on the downside. If there's more sellers that come in and hit that bid hard with market sell orders, they're going to take all the liquidity at one price level and they're going to move it to the next price level. That's how the market works. Uh, and that's how it moves. Uh, there, who's taking the other side of the trade, though, is what we want to understand as well. So that's the third element on the book map chart, and that is the liquidity heat map. It's very simple data here. Uh, so let me show the liquidity heat map. And this is where we start to lose people uh, because they've never had access to this before. 
um, it is all derived from your dome, your, your level two, your depth of market, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and what you're looking at here uh, in the COB column here, we, we have it. Uh, it's called current order book instead of depth of market. Uh, and uh, you're looking at the number of shares per price level. These are limit sell orders, and that's all they are. This is the auction, though. This is where people are bidding to be a buyer in the market. On the, on the other side uh, of the best bid and offer, or on the offer side, these are the sellers, and this is where they are lined up to deal, and they're um, basically advertising or saying, I will be a seller if you want to sell to me up here at these levels. All right? That's it. That's all it is. But what we do in Bookmap is we take that uh, depth of market data, we transform it. Let me show the, the, the live market. We transform it uh, into a heat map form. So this is the live market. And this vertical white line here is a separator between the uh, current market to the right and the historical market to the left. All right. So this, this candlestick is forming right now. Uh, and there's just nothing going on here at the moment. Um, and uh, uh, you can see in your dome here, okay, at, at $1.76, uh, we have 41,810 shares. And we have a histogram here. So we have a numerical value and a histogram. This is your, your, your level two, all right? Uh, now, what we do in Bookmap is we just take that data and transform it into a heat map, a graphical representation of that liquidity. Uh, and it's this color red. It is the most here uh, on the bid. Okay, we can see other red levels up here, a little bit higher liquidity on the offer up at 206, 42,000 shares. Uh, the scale of the heat maps up in the top center of the chart right here, uh, red and orange, very high liquidity, then yellow, white, blue, and then black is the least amount of liquidity. All right, so we got a dimmer here. I'm just gonna dim it down a little bit so it makes it a little easier to read. Uh, now look at this here. We're going to go over this context here. Uh, if we get enough buyers up here, uh, then we're looking for it to pop up to this liquidity level or two, $2 here. Uh, you can see there's a battle erupting here. We see 50,000 and that's one individual player actually, or the majority of them, uh, showing 50,000 shares who just popped into the book. So if we get enough buyers that want to move the market up to 206, uh, or $2, they got to trade through this guy. Uh, first. That's just how the market works. And that's all we're showing here. Uh, and um, uh, it, let's see if they do it. Let's see if they can can uh, trade into him and through him. Uh, so uh, anyway, uh, that's the heat map here. Now the beauty and the, what looks really complex in the heat map here is actually really simple. All of these striations in the price is just the liquidity recorded over time. You can see that that um, those uh, 43,000 shares that we saw are 42,000 shares down here. Now it's 34, right? Uh, so it changed. The liquidity changed. They pulled liquidity from the market. It is recorded here in the heat map. See how it's it's kind of went orange to darker uh, red in here, and then now it's lighter orange. We can verify it here using the data tip tool. Hover over here, and it says 34,000 uh, shares. Uh, here is 41.8. Uh, uh, a thousand shares. Then it then they pulled and they're back to thirty four thousand shares. That's it, right? So we can start to understand though. Now this is where it gets really interesting and insightful. Is how long did they stay in this order book and did they transact or did they pull that liquidity away? Are there other people that want to buy down here as well? This gives us a lot of insight to the auction and where price might go next because all it is is showing supply, but or I'm sorry, demand, and we can read the demand here uh, uh, with the heat map. And that's, that's it. Uh, so uh, now uh, we have these three elements here that you cannot see within your candlestick. Uh, you, you have first off pure price action and structure, okay? areas of consolidation, breakdown, breakdown again, buyers come back in and now they're trying, they're, Let's see if we get enough buyers up here where they previously bought. And if we do, we should get a breakout or we have the potential, higher potential, put it that way, for a breakout back up into 195. And that's just reading the buyers and sellers in here.
Now let's compare that uh, to a candlestick chart. Uh, our candlestick chart, well, I'm not seeing anything in here in the candlestick chart, right? It's just back and forth and it's slightly lower uh, lows and lower highs here. So your candlestick chart, chart is bearish. Um, all right, now, if you're, you're a candlestick trader, for example, okay. Well, then what you're looking for, if if you're looking for a continuation of the trend, then right here, you're looking for sellers. There they are. Okay, they should be able to hit 76 uh, and below. Okay, so I'm looking for these sellers to come in uh, and, and trade it back down to 76 right here. All right, so that's by just looking at this candlestick chart and what I anticipate in the order flow uh, here, All right? So I'm matching up this kind of magical, like how do you read candles uh, and, and start to understand uh, uh, these candlestick patterns uh, by, you know, engulfing pattern or, you know, uh, uh, if it's a, a doji or, um, you know, a shadowing pattern or, you know, whatever the pattern is, match it up with the price action and the order flow uh, and then you have something uh, a lot more solid and you're looking for the follow through or the break of that pattern. Okay. So uh, now, for example, let's, let's cover it. We're looking for sellers, right? Uh, because we just found some, but now these guys here, they might be trapped if we get buyers up here at 83. And then we're back to that 83 to pop up to uh, uh, this area here. So we're just going through different scenarios in in the order flow here and comparing it to the candlestick chart. Let me know if you have any questions if I'm losing you here. Uh, because uh, uh, what I'm trying to uh, demo and uh, display to you here uh, is very simply understanding the data here in book map, these three elements on the chart of price action, volume within the price action, and then the bid, the bid and the offer within that price action, and then reflecting off of that with candlesticks. That's it right now. Uh, so, uh, uh, and and then we'll, we'll see if we get follow through uh, and, and we'll be able to take a look at it here. Uh, but uh, uh, what we do uh, or what this can help you with uh, is to gain some, some insight in here. Like, in this candlestick pattern here, it's not much of a, a pattern, right? Uh, it's more of a trend. Uh, but you'd be looking for sellers to try to trade it back down to, uh, uh, you know, bottom of the range in here. Because we're not, we found some buyers up here, but we haven't found too much since, right? We found a little bit in here. So anyway, uh, that's uh, one of the ways to uh, uh, relate this data to candlesticks. Right. So when you look at your candlesticks, now you're going to understand really what's behind it uh, by understanding the order flow here. Right. So uh, we can go back and look at some of these other candlestick patterns as well. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, if you want to confirm like this, this is a breakdown here. Uh, you can see like this wick up here. And, and this is not not a uh, maybe this is a buy here. Maybe uh, uh, it starts to break below the the uh, the. Um, close here uh, but uh, here's your confirmation uh, candle here and uh, and and then here's the follow through to the downside all right you can even see the pullback to that area so let's turn on actually the uh, and confirm it first off we'll look at the price action okay so I can see now a break here this is the important area right in the candle you couldn't see that earlier. Uh, and also kind of one here as well, this swing and look at the pullback to that swing right here and then continuation. Okay, that's good. Uh, so, you know, that's starting to give us some deeper insight to this candlestick action here. Uh, let's let's add the volume though uh, onto it. Okay, where's the volume transacting? Well, that's kind of a mess. There's buyers up here and then the sellers uh, move it away pretty quickly on this move here and shift it. And they sell down here below this area, okay. And they and they that's where they bre they breach the uh, uh, the low here. We do not get any buyers on this pullback. Look at this in here, pretty heavy selling. At this point, we'd be looking for the sellers to drive this lower. Now, where would we think they would drive it? 
that's where the hit liquidity heat map can come into play, right? First is high liquidity. Well, they, they traded into and through that area. Next area is down here, but let's just zoom out. And we can also filter this heat map here. It's maybe telling us a little too much. Uh, we can just go here and um, heat map settings uh, and then uh, make this um, uh, filter for higher liquidity only, right? And try to get some uh, uh, deeper insight here. All right. Uh, didn't didn't really help too much. This area and this area are the best. Uh, and then this area would have been next, but they came in a little bit later. Um, but um, you can clearly see the support uh, here at, at 76. Hey, Bruce, we just lost sound. Sorry. Uh, and th this would be um, uh, confirming uh, this candlestick pattern with the volume and then also these kind of uh, areas of liquidity down here as magnets for that, that volume to trade to. All right. So uh, now let's look at this pullback here because you see this kind of activity all the time. And it, it's really amazing, I, I, I feel. Um, so we can really get into it here. Uh, and uh, we can draw up a line, uh, and uh, here's here's where it dropped from, right, right here. Look at the pullback already here. It 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 couldn't even make a stronger pullback to where it dropped from, but this is the swing right here. So it's kind of a zone uh, in here between uh, two twelve and and two seventeen or so. All right, now let's zoom out. Look where price came. Whoops. Look where price came to retest uh, on the buy side in the auction. You'll see this all the time, how uh, buyers will come back in and, and test it. Is there demand up here? Uh, you know, is, is, are we gonna find buyers? Uh, and uh, we don't, right? And this is where we can get into some of these other concepts that Bookmap shows very well, uh, is exhaustion and absorption. In this case, we're looking for exhaustion up here uh, we do see some uh, trading activity up here, so it, it's it's not really uh, technically uh, exhaustion here because they they are trading up at this 214 uh, swing, uh, but we do see this retest here. Now this is the same concept we just covered. Here are the sellers they drop it, and look at the retest back to where they dropped it. Do we find buyers here? No. That's where we're looking for sellers to come in on the other side. And down in here, we do see that. And that's where they're gonna drive it back down to test these guys or this zone down here in this liquidity, right? So that's just um, a kind of fractal move and, and a repetition of what we just covered on this time frame over here. Does that make sense? Uh, so, uh, uh, let's see here. When you make changes on your chart, explain how you do this. Okay, changes in 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 what sense, Phil? Um, do you mean like uh, uh, zooming in and out? Uh, yeah, I mean I can go over that. It's the, the navigation in Bookmap is um, uh, similar to my settings. My settings on what, uh, Phil? Uh, so the um, anyway, the navigation is 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 very similar to other. Um, uh, other charts, visual settings. I guess the heat map is what you mean. If I right click on the heat map, I go right to the heat map and I can click on the settings here. Okay, this is it. And I just I just use these cutoff sliders here uh, to uh, uh, show um, uh, maybe kind of a uh, areas of liquidity that, let me just show the opposite here. If I If I move them all the way down here, it gets really noisy really quickly, right? So I don't need to see all that. Uh, so I can use the slider here to kind of filter out some of those uh, smaller. See, see how that's a little too much of a filter, uh, but I can use that to uh, uh, kind of um, uh, filter for uh, some of that high liquidity that I'm looking for. And that that's it. All right. I hope, I hope that answers your question. Um, 
Yeah, yeah, there you go, Josh. Yeah, the sliders help you out a ton. You, you might have to adjust it a little bit uh, on each individual stock or during volatility. I mean, look, and in a couple of hours, you're, you're probably going to have to adjust it due to, due to the non-farm. Um, so uh, uh, it, everything is going to be just blown out, right? Um, and uh, uh, something else is going to happen at that point. Um, all right. So uh, anyway, this is what we're really starting to understand now is these markets at a much more profound level. Uh, and uh, uh, Fausto is already knows all of this stuff, like the back of his hand. Uh, but now he has a platform that visualizes it for him. Uh, uh, I remember seeing Fausto at God, I was just getting into trading. It was around 2007 or something, uh, maybe even a little earlier. And he was at the New York uh, City um, Money Show, uh, and he, he was he won the competition uh, for trading uh, there. And uh, I talked to him afterwards, and uh, uh, he doesn't remember me, but I, I remember talking to him. Um, but, uh, yeah, he was going over, uh, uh, you know, reading the order book and looking at price structure. I remember vividly. Um, and, uh, it is the same stuff in here. In fact, you don't have to look at if, if you don't want to look at candlesticks and individual candlesticks, you just look at price structure. Uh, it's the same thing here. Like this is a price structure here. This is getting kind of messy again, but so let's take the candles off and let me show you what I mean. Uh, this is a breakout here and this is back and forth, right? This is the breakdown part here. So here's your price structure. This is your consolidation. Here's your break away from consolidation. For price to break away from a consolidation, it usually does it on strong uh, sell or buy volume, right? So that's what you look for at the bottom edge in here, like we just were talking about. Uh, and then we can see this beautiful pullback to it too. Now, what we were covering on the pullback in the price structure here uh, in the order flow is exhaustion. Okay. So we got, we, you know, it, it didn't exhaust necessarily up here, but it did here. Uh, and we don't, we don't find any buyers up here. We found the sellers here. They're going to pull it back down uh, to these areas here. Uh, and uh, that's your mean reversion trades, uh, for example, if you guys get into that kind of stuff. Uh, it, again, it, if I'm, I'm just throwing out these, these uh, 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 strategies and visualization uh, uh, tools, uh, but, but it's all, it can apply to all of them, uh, really, uh, because it's just the, the pure price action and, and the, uh, the auction within it. Uh, that we're we're showing here in Bookmap, and that's kind of the that's what professional traders really appreciate um, about Bookmap is it's not some whiz bang um, indicator. It's just showing you this very simple market data. Uh, so um, there are. I, I want to if if everything's okay, um, uh, maybe I'll move on into uh, uh, some of the add-ons uh, that you can get with Bookmap, and and maybe some of the other questions that you guys have about Bookmap. Uh, whatever is most helpful for you is what I want to cover. So uh, get get your questions in. Uh, and uh, so, for example, do you guys use the um, sweeps and absorption uh, indicators, uh, or maybe you're using cumulative volume delta and the subchart, uh, or um, Maybe uh, uh, there's a new one, Fausto. I I, I have to demo for you. Uh, I I love this tool. Um, it is um, something we just released, and it's called Market Pulse. Uh, and uh, okay, it does not work with. Okay, it should it should work. It should work in here. Um, I'll I'll, could, I'll get back to you guys on this, but I can I can demo it here at least in the futures, uh, and I just I'll just demo it quickly. Um, this this tool is is amazing though, like uh, uh, for correlations, correlated markets, uh, and um, uh, it is going to uh, you're going to hear the market. Uh, so we're going to look at um, let's look at all of them actually. Uh, and uh, I'll just demo it here. Okay, that's right. It only works for rhythmic right now. Uh, so um, uh, yeah, but it will will 
it'll it'll work for DX feed uh, in the future for stocks. Uh, anyway, um, uh, this is not showing the right one. Yeah, hold on a minute. Sorry about that. All right, I want to change that to uh, volume pressure. Volume pressure. Volume pressure and volume pressure. Okay, so what we've got here in terms of correlations uh, is um, we're looking at, um, and we're going to hear it, and I hope you guys, you should be able to hear it, I, I hope. Um, uh, when other correlated markets, we see buying or selling pressure. And that will help us uh, understand the move here in the S&P E-mini, for example. So uh, if we're looking at this in here and we're looking at the NASDAQ E-mini, we have the Russell, uh, we have the YM or the Dow E-mini, uh, and we have the 6E, which is the uh, uh, Euro dollar index or Euro dollar. Um, now, you, can you guys hear that? They're buying and selling the Euro at this level here. Yeah, we don't hear that. Ah, uh, okay. That's too bad. Uh, anyway, like when you're looking at a price action around your very specific level and you want to look at some other stocks, for example, uh, uh, this is where you're going to get the insight. Uh, you're going to see like, okay, well, are other markets starting to bounce too at this price level? If they are, uh, you've got something much higher probability. Uh, and... Um, uh, it's just it's just comparing apples to apples and oranges to oranges uh, uh, because uh, the, everything is related in, in the market. It's value. What has value? What doesn't have value? Uh, so uh, when you start to understand the value of the other instruments compared to yours, uh, likely you're going to get them more likely you're going to get the move. Right. So understanding your correlated markets can be really, really insightful. Uh, that's our new market pulse thing. And it works by the aggressor only. Uh, at the moment. All right. So anyway, uh, I guess uh, since we cannot cover it in the stocks, it was kind of a detour. Uh, here's our breakdown, uh, guys. Uh, and um, uh, it followed through in our candlestick patterns here. Uh, so the candlesticks actually held up pretty nicely here. Uh, and we, we covered that. Uh, now let's go through the scenario that we're covering, right? Um, I know this is hindsight now, but we do this kind of analysis in real time all the time. Look at this exhaustion up here. Beautiful, right? We had we had buyers up here before. We came back up and tested that same price level, just about one tick shy of it. Uh, and then uh, there's no buyers. Do we get sellers down here? Yeah. Do they trade into and through that liquidity? Yeah. Great. We're looking, we're looking for them, to, the sellers to come in again and move it to the next level of liquidity here and then here at 150. All right. I, Bruce, I had a question. One of the traders in the room, Jeffrey, uh, just had a question. If we have a, if we are using a trade station to trade, do we or, and do we already have the X feed? Do we need to buy Bookmap? Um, so, if uh, we we connect to trade station, but not for their data. Uh, so you will need to have a Bookmap as a platform. Uh, which is either $49 a month or $99 a month. Uh, that's the subscription cost. Now you can get uh, extended uh, deals from Fausto as a Bookmap uh, partner educator, the three month, the one year and the, and the lifetime uh, versions. Uh, you'll get a discount on that. Um, and uh, you will need data with it. Now the, the DX feed data uh, for stocks uh, is, it depends on the package that you get. Uh, it is, I think, $69 a month for NASDAQ. Here, let me bring up the page. Uh, and I think it's 59 or so. Let me see. Let me see for but I, I know that uh, you guys are working with um, TradeStation to kind of like integrate it. Because I know that people, there's people in our room that also have Thinkorswim. And I mean, it, it's, I don't know, it's been over, what, two years now you've been doing it with them or a year? Uh, no, more. Yeah, more like... Um, yeah, two or, or more. Yeah, two, uh, okay, it's a while. Yeah. So basically, they're going to be doing the same thing 
with TradeStation, they had to fix some of their API that could link to each other. But there's nothing like the standalone version. I mean, the standalone version is obviously getting a lot more features yeah. um, that, and, and does a lot more. But, um, but until then, I mean, just you can use the standalone. I mean, we can't obviously trade without it, uh, getting all that data, because that's our style. But you could use this towards the long-term trades and your swing trades also. Um, there, I mean, we are a lot more stock trades, but maybe just briefly just talk really quick, um, Bruce, about just regarding about the, how they could view the, the futures or, you know. The, or crypto or. Yeah, the crypto or the, you can't see options on here, right? No, you can't see options, but I mean, this is a fantastic tool for, for the underlying. Um, uh, you know, just let me just go through an example. Uh, you know, you're looking for the uh, at the Greeks and you're looking for Vega to be dropping like a rock here. Uh, great, but what if you have a wall of liquidity and buyers down here? <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna be able to scoop up your options at, at a really good discount, uh, and um, uh, you know look for the uh, uh, potential uh, uh, turnaround and and um, uh, uh, reversal. So, uh, yeah, let, let, let's let's take a look here um, uh, at. Um, there, is there any other questions on the on the data here? Yeah, does anyone have any other questions regarding about data on the platform itself? Mark does. Let's see. So can you explain to me the CVP okay, the, column in, in Thinkorswim when you split yeah. the buyers? Yeah, sure. Oh, and I see a couple of questions about IB. So so what, what Bookmap does, and you can trade, you, you will need to have the Bookmap Global Plus version. It's, it's this one here, the 99 per month. Um, if you want to trade from the Bookmap chart, which you can. Uh, into an IB account or a TradeStation account. The way it works is is one directional. It's not for their data. It's actually the opposite. You'll be sending them data, uh, your trade data. Okay. So I don't, you know, uh, it, it's not rocket science. I mean, there's just two different data streams, or you know, um, that that come in um, uh, at least at least two um, from your data provider. You get uh, uh, data. Uh, about the market, uh, but there's also trade data. Uh, it's a different stream, uh, and uh, uh, we are picking up on that stream, and we're able to route your orders from Bookmap over to your IB account or TradeStation account. Okay, but you're not connecting to TradeStation data or IB data uh, for stocks. Uh, so, um, uh, yeah, you can do that, uh, and um, uh, the. Um, uh, so you will need the global plus for that. Now, in terms of other data costs in here, the DX feed is right here. Uh, I can put this link in or it's just bookmap.com slash DX feed and you'll see in here uh, some of the costs. So uh, from NASDAQ data, it's 69 a month. Uh, EdgeX data is 59 a month or you can get the premium bundle of both of those together, which I would recommend uh, is 119 a month. Uh, there's also uh, NBBO or National Best Bid and Offer. Uh, if you want that data, which is 34 a month. So it starts to add up. It's expensive. Uh, just uh, uh, give it a try. Uh, see if you like it. Uh, and uh, maybe you can get away with just NASDAQ data. But uh, uh, I would recommend uh, uh, getting the premium bundle here. Now, we don't make any money off the data, just so you know. Um, it's just the, what's needed to run Bookmap. Uh, so now, now, will you also have Archipelago or any of the other ECNs? We do have another uh, uh, data provider that uh, for stocks that we just uh, connected to, like, I don't know, um, some months ago. Uh, let me show you where that is. If we go to connectivity, uh, it's called OmniFeed. And we'll click on that. Uh, and it, it's great. Uh, you know, you get ARCA, uh, NASDAQ, uh, CME. Uh, you can you can go down and, and read through it here, uh, and uh, you can see the prices here too uh, as well. So uh, U.S. stocks, this is what you get for ninety eight dollars per month. Uh, is um, uh, you get Nasdaq Total View, which you guys are know what that is uh, since you look at that product, uh, and then uh, you have Arca, CTA, uh, uh, and NBBO as well, uh, Level One MBB, MBBO. So you can't that, get EDGX with that. No, they don't have it on that bundle. No. So, what would be a better bundle? Bundle that one or the one prior? 
I don't know. Um, it, this, this I've been, I played around with for a while. Uh, and, uh, uh, there were some issues about, <laughs> um, being able to, um, uh, really view this or, and, and, and look at this in more detail. Uh, you guys will probably know more than I will. And the reason being is like, uh, uh, for an educator to start showing, um, and displaying this data, uh, then I've, I've got to pay like, you know, thousands of dollars in educational or, you know, professional fees, uh, right. and, uh, uh, and list be listed with these exchanges as a professional. And I was just like, okay, like, you know, we can't even give this to like, uh, uh, some of our educators and, and subsidize that cost. Uh, so yeah, it, I know. it really kind of hurt us, um, to be able to, and it hurt them too. But I mean, it, it, it's just a legal thing. Like, uh, they, they were scared that, uh, the exchanges turn around and go, you guys are like, you know, giving this to professionals and you're not telling us they're professionals. We're going to sue you. So, um, try, I would just say, try them both. Uh, there's no discounts on the data here. So you can subscribe to one, one month compared to one, uh, the other month, try it and, and see what you get. Yeah, I'm just curious how much um, I know. Um, as in the ECN of of Arca, um, how much more you would get versus EDGX? You know, on in New York versus EDGX, which is another ECN. And I know we're talking about because if you like, for some people here, like if you go on the Nasdaq, when we talk about Nasdaq Book Viewer, and you buy it, it's fifteen dollars for the book. But if you look in the bottom, it says you're a professional, it's eighty five dollars. So. That's what he's basically talking about because people ask me, they're like, which one I get? I says, well, don't re you're a professional if you are like a retail broker, like giving advice. Those are really professionals. Like you're an individual trading for yourself, so you're technically not a professional. You're not trading someone else's money in that, in that intent. Right, right, exactly, exactly. I'm not a CTA. Um, yeah. And uh, uh, so um, I was a CTA. <laughs> but i'm not now um but uh uh the um uh, anyway guys like i i i just i want to mention this before let me know if you have any more questions about this um about the connection and stuff and mark i'll get to your question i just want to let you know or, or show this flag pattern in here i know that fausto has his uh kind of patented uh, fausto flags uh i just want to show you like how this works in the in the order flow Okay, so it, it and you can look at measured moves. It's amazing what you can see in the markets. Um, uh, but you know, here's your move one, and we're going to just duplicate that. Uh, and now we're going to just take that one and go from here, and voila, it matches perfectly with 150. Right? There's your measured move. Here's your first move, your consolidation, and now you're looking for your second move. Uh, so again, like different ways of, of, uh, of trading the order flow you look for on this move here, here's your exhaustion, here's your confirmation, looking for the move to, uh, uh drive lower. Now, you know, that's what we know at the moment. Uh, and I just want to cover a flag pattern in here. Um, and what makes the important point is what makes up the flag pattern. I don't care is called a flag pattern. I don't care if about the candlesticks. I care about the order flow. It is the order flow that makes up the pattern. Uh, and uh, uh, that's where you can get, get the confirmation. If you don't see sellers down here or you see high liquidity down here and you see buyers up here at 168, that flag pattern is going to fail, okay? Or much higher probability is going to fail. And that's what you can get from understanding the order flow within the pattern. All right, so let me get to some of these other questions here. Um, uh, Allison, got you. Uh, Ravena, okay, Phil. Um, oh, you're you're answering Phil. Um, okay, yeah, yeah, good. Thank you, uh, Mark. Uh, and uh, Trade Station book map. Uh, what about the deal data feed from forty nine dollars a month? From that was a while back, uh, Jim, um, and. Uh, it was limited time only uh, when we first started with them. Okay, so uh, uh, it, I, I, there was some sort of deal with them, and they subsidized that cost. 
And Jim, we're coming out. Um, I know that they have an, uh, we're, I actually have a meeting with Trade Station, and I know they're going to be working on, I'm working out something with Trade Station regarding what, to, to do something for Bookmap. And um, I mean, it has nothing to do with Bookmap. It's more or less to students at CTU. So we'll let, we'll, we'll let you know. Um, it's probably going to happen within the next month or two. They're just working out a couple of things. But, uh, tr you know, we're, tr you know, I just uh, I'm going to be doing a lot more education for Trade Station. Um, Trade Station, just to give you a heads up, they they try to get involved in our own education, and we did a lot of education for them, and we haven't we basically haven't done that much with them. But they came back to us. They want to get they want us to start educating their clients a lot more. You know, we've been using it, and we featured it, and they want to know well how can we kind of help the students also, you know, uh, with their training, and they're, they're going to be we're going to probably run a promotion with trade station and you know which is going to kind of help out everyone so I'll give you a heads up when that happens it sounds like you got that deal jim uh so make sure you pay your bills every month <laughs> don't lose it you don't lose it yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> with that phrase lose it you know something use it or lose it uh, yeah use it or lose it that's yeah, it yeah <laughs> yeah no pay attention to that one uh uh, because, uh, yeah, uh, make sure it's automatically paid. Um, yep. so, all right. So what we're going to do is, uh, listen, Bruce, we're going to have you back, you know, um, I know we're going to take our break and get ready for lunch and stuff like that. But, uh, listen, I put the, I put my email address there. If anybody wants to find out more about the promotion to kind of get the book map platform, just email me and I'll email you the promotion for it. I don't want to start harassing people and send you all these emails and stuff like that. But, um, if you have any questions, if you really want to learn and, and, you know, get that deal, just send me an email. And then in the meantime, Bruce, uh, you know, look forward to having you, you know, you know, next month or even more frequently, we just launched our new platform here and, you know, we're really excited having you during these rooms and, you know, doing our webinars, you know? Yeah. Vice versa. We'd love to have you over, uh, on, on, you got to change uh, that discord though. I know. I know. You got to right? change that discord. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're, you're, you're totally right. I apologize for that. Um, so, uh, anyway, guys, this, this movie, you can, you know, again, like, you know, just you're looking for that follow through and this is something to lean on in the order flow. So, uh, you know, that looks like this, this is going to follow through, uh, to the 150. Uh, anyway, uh, thanks Fausto. Thanks so much for having me on. Uh, happy to come back anytime you guys have any questions. Thanks, Bruce. Thanks, sir. All right, everybody, we're going to pick up uh, when the market starts making a big run. Don't forget, we have class today at 3 o'clock if you're a student. And uh, we're going to do our live uh, afternoon meeting at 2.30 with Josh. And like I said, we'll be broadcasting live on all the social networks. If you're not around, just make sure you have that mobile app in the top left-hand corner. If you're not around, you can always access that, and you can always listen in anytime you want. And also get the alerts of everything that we do here. Thanks, everybody. And uh, we'll see you, um, like I said, we're not going anywhere, so you can still trade. But thanks, Bruce, for coming in. We'll see you next time.